What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to add Redux into any Next.js app. This is also going to work for basic React apps as well. Let's jump into it. What's going on guys? Before we jump into this tutorial, this video was made possible by our amazing friends over at Skillshare. If you want one month completely free trial of Skillshare, check this out. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions of people come together to take the next step in their creative journey. The thing I love about Skillshare is that there are no ads. They're always launching new premium classes and they also recommend really interesting classes. So before you know it, I'm actually no longer watching TV or Netflix. All I do is watch Skillshare while I'm actually eating my food. Most classes are under 60 minutes, so they should be able to fit any schedule, whether you're super busy or you've got a little bit more time on your hands. I've actually gone ahead and dropped the React Basics one one entire class on Skillshare. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description are going to get a free month worth of premium Skillshare and you're going to be able to with that access the React Basics which I've uploaded. On top of that you're going to get access to thousands and thousands of courses available on Skillshare's platform. I've actually been checking out a amazing video editing class at the moment by Ali Abdel where I was actually able to find out how I could use my iPad to add animated handwriting in into my videos to level up my production value. And now I'm making the best use out of my iPad as well as leveling up my Final Cut production game. So this is just an example of the amazing value that I've got since I've signed up at Skillshare. And if you guys want to go ahead and benefit from this just like I have, then go ahead and remember the first 1000 people to go ahead and grab that link are gonna get one free month of Skillshare premium, which means that you can access my React Basics 101 class. It's completely free, you have nothing to lose. and then after that you can go ahead and continue if you're enjoying what you see on Skillshare. So let's jump straight into the tutorial. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and run the following command npx create next app. Now I'm going to be setting up with Tailwind CSS so I'm using the template with Tailwind CSS. So let's go ahead and hit enter. In the meantime I want you to head over to the following link on the screen. This will take you to the Redux Toolkit quick start guide. Once our app is initialized all we need to do is cd into the app, that app right there. And then we're going to go ahead and type in code dot to open up our code repo. So now you're going to see a starter template for our Next.js app. We're going to click on pages and head over to index.tsx. This is the first page that you're going to see when you load up your app on the home page, but it's not actually the starting point for the app. So we're going to head over to underscore app.tsx. This is actually the starting point for your application and it's where all your components are going to get loaded from. So the first step to adding Redux into our application is to do the following installation, npm install, Redux.js toolkit and React Redux. Now I'm actually using yarn, but if you're not sure if you're using yarn or npm, if you have a yarn.lock file, you'll need to use yarn. If you have a package lock file, you're going to be using npm. So in this case, if you're using npm, simply follow this command. If you're using yarn, follow the command that I'm about to show you right now. It's going to be yarn add yarn add redux js toolkit react redux once that's installed command j to hide the terminal now the first thing to notice is that if you were to do this in javascript fairly simple installation instructions i'm going to show you in typescript so that way you can be fully informed and see how you can do both so the first step that you want to do is go ahead and create the store file now as we're using typescript it's going to be store.ts not js so they need to update that on their website let's go ahead and create a new file called store.ts now, once we've got this open, we can go ahead and copy this snippet inside of our code. The first top half is basically going ahead and configuring that global data layer around our application. The second part is actually the TypeScript definitions needed to go ahead and infer the different types that are going to exist inside of that global data layer. So we're going to use these later on, but save the file and we can proceed to step two. Now the next step is to actually wrap our entire app inside of this Redux provider. So what we're now going to do is do two import statements inside of our underscore app.ts folder. So heading over to underscore app.tsx, you'll see that our layout looks a little bit different from their example. This is because they're using a React app, whereas we're using a Next.js app. It's fairly straightforward, and I'm going to show you how to go ahead and get this working. So firstly, we need to fix this and make sure that we're actually in pulling in the file from the correct directory. So in this case, I need to import store from one level up, which is actually just going to be dot dot forward slash store. The second one is going to be the provider from React Redux, which can stay the same. 
Now, as you can see in their example, they're simply wrapping the entire app inside of a provider. Now, in, in order to do the same thing here, all we need to do, so the first thing to do here to make it very simple, it doesn't matter how many different higher order components you have here. All you want to do is surround your app inside of parentheses, drop it down a line and simply pop in the provider like so. And you want to close this up like so. It's as simple as that to go ahead and surround your app with the React Redux provider. Now think of it this way. So your entire app is going to get loaded within this provider, which means it can use all of the benefits of Redux inside or below that point in the tree. The next step is to simply create our first Redux slice. Now, in this case, we're going to build a dummy counter app. So we're actually going to create something called a counter slice. And we're going to do a slightly different layout to what they have here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a top layer folder. So I'm going to click on package JSON, create a new folder called slices. Inside of here, I'm going to have a slice called the counter slice. And this is going to be responsible for holding all of the counter information inside of my app, but at a global data layer level. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy the example and we're going to repurpose this to our use case. So I'm going to explain briefly what this means. The first thing we're doing is creating a TypeScript definition. This is because we need to define what this initial state looks like. So as you can see, we've got this object here called initial state, which has the following value inside of it, which is of type number. And as you can see, we can tell that it's of type number because it has the counter state interface. Okay, so in this case, you could use a type, you could use an interface, it's up to preference here. But as you can see, we're defining that the value is of type number. So in this case, we need to go ahead and proceed. We're going to use this handy create slice function from a Redux toolkit, which is simply used by providing a few different parameters inside of the object. The first thing that we need to do is go ahead and give it a name. So in this case, counter slice seems suitable. If we had information about the basket, for example, this would be the basket slice. If it was the user, it would be the user slice and so forth the second argument is the initial state and the third argument is the reducers the reducers are known as the actions now think of these as the functions which we're going to go ahead and call inside of our code which is then going to allow us to manipulate the values located in these different slices at that global data layer so the first one is the increment now i'm going to go ahead and remove this you can look at that in more detail if you're interested but let's take a quick peek as to what's going on here. The first one is increment. And what we're doing here is we're simply incrementing the state value. So in this case, the global state value by a value of one. And the decrement is doing the opposite, minusing by one. And as you can see, we can also have more complicated arguments or more complicated functions which can manipulate the state by an action payload, which we are going to go ahead and pass through when we call this function. So as you can see, this one takes a special type, which is a TypeScript definition pulled by the Redux.js toolkit. And the argument type here is a number because the value that you would want to increment by would most likely be a number that we're going to go ahead and pass to the function. In this case, we're not going to use the increment by amount. We're going to go ahead and get rid of that over here. Now, here you can see we've got action creators being generated. This is simply basically going ahead and allowing us to call these functions outside of this counter slice. Hence why we're exporting these two different functions from the actions that we've described above. OK, and then finally, we need to export this counter slice reducer so that way we can connect it to the store. So the next step is that we need to go ahead and actually import it into our store. So here I'm importing the reducer that we created for the counter slice. And we're going to go ahead and actually connect it to our store right here. So the next thing we're going to do is basically go ahead and give it the, the name that we've essentially given it inside the counter slice is the name that we want to give the key over here. And then we've got the counter reducer being paired alongside that. What this is doing is configuring Redux so that way we have a counter slice which has which is being prepared with the counter reducer. This, this is essentially a combination of the different actions inside of our counter slice as well as the initial state and current state of that global slice. After we're done with that, we're actually going to run our app. So command J opens a terminal, yarn run dev or npm run dev to go ahead and spin up your app. This is going to start your app on localhost 3000. If you see this screen, you've done everything 
correctly. I'd also highly recommend as a bonus tip that you actually install the Redux dev tools to see if you actually set up your counter slice in the correct manner. If you did everything correctly, you should see a counter slice with a value of zero. Heading over to the Chrome web store and installing the Redux dev tools as so. So how do we actually manipulate the values inside of that global store? Well, I'm gonna grab everything inside of the main and I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete this. I'm gonna start by typing in a H1, the value of count is zero. I'm also gonna simplify this by removing the footer. Now, as you can see, the value of count is a hard value of zero. Firstly, we don't wanna do this. We actually wanna get the value from the Redux store. Now, the way we do this is we're gonna use the use selector and use dispatch methods accordingly to go ahead and pull the value from the global store and also manipulate the value by dispatching those actions that we created earlier. We're also gonna import those actions that we're gonna end up using in a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and import the following. Our use selector, use dispatch helpers from React Redux and our decrement and increment actions from the counter slice that we originally set up. I'm also gonna go ahead and import the root state that we previously set up earlier inside of our global store. This will actually give me the correct typings based on how we configured our slices. So the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and pop in the following. We are gonna create a variable called count. We're gonna use the use selector hook and what this is going to do it's going to give us a callback which has the type of root state now i want to show you something interesting if i type in state dot you will now see the list of slices inside of our global redux store are shown to us and we can go ahead and click the uh, counter and then we can click dot and you can see now i'm accessing the counters accessing the counters state so i'm going to actually go ahead and get the value to prove that this is correct we initialized it with a value of zero inside of the slice so if i go ahead and do count hit save and i hit refresh you will see that we still have a value of zero yes it fast refreshes i just wanted to exaggerate that point the next thing i want to do is have two buttons one which increments one which decrements so in order to dispatch these actions i need something called the dispatch so in this case i can use the user dispatch hook to go ahead and get this this will allow me to dispatch certain actions which will go ahead and manipulate the appropriate redux slice so next up i'm going to add two different buttons an increment and a decrement button i've added some minimal styling to go ahead and give the increment a green color and the decrement a red color so as you can see now we have these nice two buttons so when i click on the increment i'm going to go ahead and attach a method to the on click function this is going to be an arrow function which is going to go ahead and dispatch the increment action for the decrement, I'm going to go ahead and do the opposite. So I'm going to have an arrow function, which is going to dispatch the decrement action. After hitting save, you can see we get a nice little format. And as I go ahead and hit the appropriate button, so if I increment, you can see the value gets updated because we're modifying the Redux store, and which then causes the state to change, which results in an impactful state update. So as you can see, I can increment and I can decrement and all is working well. To test that this is really working, Open up your inspector, head to your Redux tab, and you should see if we hit a refresh, you can now see the different actions that are getting dispatched alongside the actual effect that it's having. And you can also click on this diff tab, which shows the change in which is happening inside of the store each time you press or dispatch that action. So as you can see, each time I'm dispatching it, it's modifying the global data layer especially in particular, the value variable inside of the counter slice. You can even go back in time by clicking on the jump button, go ahead and undo all of the previous actions to get back and forth if you wanna go ahead and debug and play around with this. Now, a final little thing that I like to do is actually add something called a selector. As you can see here, this is quite a, not a very clean pattern, especially as our app tends to grow. So I'm actually gonna show you a nice little refactoring tip. You don't wanna to tend to have your selectors like this. It gets kind of messy as your app tends to grow. So I wanna cut this out of here, head over to my counter slice, and here I wanna go ahead and write the following. I'm gonna create a select value function which is going to make use of the root state so i'm going to have to go ahead and import this from our store and then this is going to go ahead and return the state counter value now as you can see this is all neatly wrapped into this select value and then what we can do is as we're exporting this from this file i can now go ahead and say use selector select value import this from our counter size and this is a much neater approach 
This is an example of a selector. And what you would typically do is have a selector for each different variable in that counter slice as you need it. You can also have interesting selectors such as calculate the total from the basket, for example, or you can do more complicated things as you see fit. With that said, you've just gone ahead and successfully added Redux to your Next.js app. Yes, it's that simple. You can now go ahead and add several different slices into your app to, to further segregate the global data layer into useful little chunks such as the basket slice, the user slice, the theme slice if you had a dark or light theme for example and so forth. If you found this video useful and you want to see more short sweet videos just like this one hit the thumbs up, drop a comment down below and as always guys this is your boy Pop React. Peace.